Before we start our discussion of while loops, let's have a quick review of for loops. And let's try, oh, let's try this one right here. Uh, so I have this for loop set up. And without running it, I would like you to discuss with the person next to you what values of i will be printed by this loop. Ms. Banerjee, can you tell us how many times this loop will run? Six is correct, Miss. And uh, Ms. Erda, can you tell us for what values of i the loop will run? Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. That is correct. This part is called the initialization. This part is called the test. And this part is called the increment. In this case, the increment happens to be a decrement. And let's run this to show you that it does indeed work six times and that the numbers are 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. So that's just a quick little review for you on loops for the for loop. The for loop is known as a test at the top loop. And that's going to be important for us today, for loop, test at the top. And what that means is that this test is done every single time before the next iteration of the loop is done. Here, the iteration only has one line of code in it, but I could have as many lines as I want in here between the two brackets. If the brackets do not exist, only one line is associated with the for loop. My experience with teaching the for loop to CSA students is that the single most common bug that you will have in your code will be this. And the first thing you'll notice about this little bug is that it will still compile in some cases if you're not using I. And you might be curious as to why that is. Here's what's actually happening. The for loop is running like this, and the target of the for loop is simply this semicolon, which means that nothing is actually happening in the for loop. So the for loop runs six times and does nothing. And then this part runs over here. So when I run this code, you can see that nothing is printed here, and there is no error message. And so what you need to understand is that this semicolon should not be there. Oh, we got the eye here. Let me put this semicolon back. I, I, it, OK, can someone tell me why it won't compile right now? Look, I got the eye set up right here. And then when I go to print the I, it says it can't find it. Yes, miss? The I dies at the semicolon here. OK, and so there is no variable I at this point in the code. We say in the lingo of computer science, we say the I is out of scope. It's out of scope. Variables are like people. They, they're born, they live for a while, and then they die. This variable is born here. It lives for a while and then it dies at the end of the semicolon. So after the semicolon, there is no more I. Now, if I was to print the word hello here, and if I was to run this, you can see it prints the word hello once. And the reason why is that it finishes running this for loop that does nothing six times, and then it just executes this code once. You might be curious as to wh why it didn't give me an error with these curly brackets. And you're allowed to block off any piece of code you want. In this case, the curly brackets aren't really doing anything. So you, this is only running one time. So if you come to me and say, well, how, why is this loop not running six times? I say it is running six times. It's just not running this line six times because the semicolon has terminated the loop prematurely. So keep that in mind for your for loops.